Hi everybody, I am going to talk about the techniques of resource mobilization. Disability is a term considered to be a part of human condition since everyone at some point of life experiences some form of impairment either permanent or temporary. Life is difficult for persons with permanent impairment, especially during their old age in routine functioning and socialization. It was well adjusted in the joint family system of earlier times through the helping hands offered by the other persons of the family. The present nuclear family system is a great challenge to persons with disabilities and the society views them to be unproductive and burdensome. Disability is associated with religious belief and is treated as a curse by the divine power by many people even in this 21st century. All these things together make disability an unproductive and dependent condition hampering equal rights and opportunities for persons with disabilities. In this context, resource mobilization is a major area of social work intervention in the present scenario. The concept is similar to that used in other fields of social work with a difference in some of the strategies only. The magnitude of the challenges arising out of disability being huge, persons with disabilities must be supplied with greater socio-economic and political attention and social workers must maintain adequate knowledge about the services available to the persons with disabilities towards inclusion. Social work in the field of disability has become a prominent area of study in the social work education in India and it is essential therefore to have a basic understanding of the concept, methods and models of resource mobilization for providing suitable services to persons with a disability. At the end of this talk you will gain an adequate knowledge about the concept and the process of resource mobilization, understand the principles of resource mobilization, appreciate the importance of resource mobilization and learn the methods and the techniques of fundraising. Let me briefly explain the concepts of resource mobilization. According to Practical Guide for Research and Community-Based Organizations report in 2009, Resource mobilization may be defined as a management process that involves identifying people who share the same values as your organization and taking steps to manage that relationship. Looking closely at this definition, one can see that resource mobilization is a process that involves three integrated concepts. One, organizational management and development. It involves establishing and strengthening organizations for the resource mobilization process. It also involves identifying the organization's vision, mission and goals and putting in place internal systems and processes that enable the resources mobilization efforts such as identifying the roles of board and staff and efficiently managing human, material and financial resources. Creating and implementing a strategic plan that addresses the proper use of existing funds on one hand and seek out diversified sources of future funding on the other. Let me outline the principles of resource mobilization. Resource mobilization is just a means to the end and the end being the fulfillment of the organization's vision. Resource mobilization is a team effort and involves the institution's commitment to resource mobilization, acceptance for the need to raise resources, 
and institutionalizing resource mobilization priorities, policies and budget allocation. The responsibility for the resource mobilization effort is shared by the board, the president or the executive director and the resource mobilization unit. An organization needs money in order to raise money. There are no quick fixes in resource mobilization. Communicating and prospecting. Once an organization gets ready for resource mobilization, it must ensure long-term sustainability through acquiring new donors and maintaining a constituency base. Resource mobilization entails learning how to connect with the prospective and finding common ground through shared values and interests. It also entails discerning the right prospect to approach and matching the appropriate resource mobilization strategy to the prospect. Two principles that govern communicating and prospecting are resource mobilization is really friend raising. Financial support comes as a result of a relationship and not as a goal in and of itself. Two, people do not give money to causes, they give to people with causes. People give to organizations to which they have personal affiliation in some form or other. Relationship building. Once donors are identified, get closer, get to know them better, same way as developing an acquaintance. Initiating new relationships, nurturing existing ones, and building an ever-expanding network is an ongoing activity. Let me mention about the importance of building credible relationships with the donor agencies. Good cause alone is not sufficient to attract funding. Gathering support for the cause and building up personal and community relationship is more important in ensuring the trust relationship with the funding partners. Moreover, this relationship should be sustained by developing the three attributes, namely legitimacy, transparency and accountability on the part of the organization and institution which are mobilizing funds. Legitimacy refers to the legal dimension of the non-profit organization that is seeking funds from eligible donors. In other words, the organization has been established according to the country's civil laws and traditions. Such organizations are more likely to receive more support as they have attained some level of compliance with the standard practice as constituted by the law of the land. Transparency is very crucial in maintaining the trust relationship that the organization has built with the funding partners as well as with the community. It refers to the open communication with the internal and external stakeholders who are associated with the financial management and health of the organization. It is a valuable asset of the organization which is able to disclose information about their programs, outcomes and the financial transactions and investments to anyone who is interested to know more about the organization. It is a valid criterion that is highly regarded by potential donors and partners as transparency gives them the assurance that the organization is trustworthy and committed to its constituents. Accountability is the organization's ability to stand up for its mission and to be guided by effective management and financial principles. It denotes that the organization is rendering services in a responsible manner, manages its resources judiciously and reports back to the donors regarding the use of the donated funds. Such organizations will earn the goodwill and support of the public and the funding agencies. Thus, it is of paramount importance to build a credible relationship with the donor agencies by being legitimate, transparent and accountable 
and funds will flow in as a byproduct of this relationship. Let me mention the principles involved in relationship building. One, donor cultivation means bringing the prospect to a closer relationship with the organization, increasing interest and involvement. Two, start at the bottom of the resource mobilization pyramid to get to the top. Some of the guidelines for strategic networking are begin with the end in mind, know your audience, keep the intentions of the donor in mind, listen and be prepared to explain elements of your organization to the donor, prepare your talking points in advance, leave critical information behind and follow up. Resource mobilization is commonly used in similar meaning with the fundraising. Fundraising is just a part of it or only an outcome of resource mobilization efforts. Resource mobilization includes building valuable contacts and networks and garnering the interest, support and contributions of people important to the organization. Let me outline the reasons for the importance of resource mobilization. Resource mobilization diversifies, expands its resources base and develop new thinking and challenge the old traditions in supporting the achievement of integration agenda. It identifies and analyzes the resources available for the program priorities, policies and efficient budget allocation as stipulated in the development strategy. It understands current donor funding landscape, resource availability and support commitment. It helps to maximize the use of domestic capital and skills to expand deep relations with stakeholder and it provides continuity and stability to the organization and its work. Let me mention the do's and don'ts when meeting with the donors. The do's. Remember to always speak on equal terms with the funders. Treat donors with respect and curiosity. Follow through on everything that you say you will do. Meet all donor deadlines. Listen well to know who you are talking to. Learn their name and position and learn how to communicate with the people from different backgrounds. The don'ts. Do not use too much flattery. Do not speak in a poor ass or self-pitying manner. Do not act desperate or complain about having no money. Do not call a potential resource provider too often or talk for too long. Do not hurry or rush the funder. Let me now state some of the tips for starting a conversation. Use questions to get started. Listen well and patiently. Do not deny objections but find a positive way to answer them. Do not ask until you feel the time is right, then ask for the specific amount. Always base your appeal on facts rather than emotion. Mention if you have support from other donors. Offer a written proposal if necessary. Be flexible and understanding. If the answer from the donor is no, try to find out what the reasons are and if there are ways that this can be changed to yes. Suggest a follow-up meeting if necessary. Let me outline the items of information that can be shared during meeting. Annual reports, stories or case studies or photos, testimonials or letters of support, a standard short description of your project, newspaper articles or press coverage about your organization and business cards. It is good to be aware of the level of participation of donors in the meetings 
and let me point out some of the levels. Passive participation. Participation by giving information about other sources of donations. Participation by consultation. Participation by sharing material incentives. Functional participation. Interactive participation and self-mobilization. Situational analysis helps organizations to identify their positions before planning for an action. Development organizations plan methodologies that contribute to the viability and sustainability of the communities with which they work. Situational analysis is conducted for various reasons like assessing organizational performance, various skills and knowledge areas, motivation and environmental influences on its performance and so on. Let me mention the internal factors as well as the external factors which a situational analysis can give. Internal factors. Affirm resource mobilization successes to date. Provide a sense of history and present the organization's evolution in its responses to changes in the funding environment. Present a reality check on where the organization is at currently going on, achieving its vision, mission and existing strategic plan goals. Validate funding targets over a set period of time. Identify available funding and resource gaps. Indicate gaps in administrative systems such as finance and accounting. Indicate gaps specific to resource mobilization skills and systems such as proposal writing, implementation of other strategies, donor acquisition and upgrade. Establish ownership of resource mobilization functions. Open new doors or widen perspectives on prospective resource providers. Establish resource mobilization policies and code of ethics anchored to the organization's core values. Review the relevance of the organization's existing key messages. Determine the organization's capacity to invest in a resource mobilization program. External factors. Funders' priorities and changing trends. Demand for your organization's services. Technological innovations related to your area of work legislative and regulatory changes, competing grantees, prevailing political, social and economic conditions. There are some principal methods of resource mobilization such as government grants, public revenue raising efforts, usage fees, contributions from private donors and foreign assistance. Resource mobilization can be done through availing the various government grants. There are grants available for supporting various types of disabilities. It is important to have sufficient knowledge of these provisions when working in the field of disabilities. Some of the grants of the state and central governments are dispersed at DDRO levels like self-employment assistance while some other grants are available with the health department. The public revenue raising effort is also called finance campaigns. Organizations working in various fields engage in fundraising efforts. Let me state the several steps in the design of a user fee system. Step 1. Set targets for cost recovery. Step 2. Determine the structure of user charges. Step 3. Set user fees. Step 4. Formulate a policy on exemption and waivers. Step 5. Design and operationalize a system for managing fee collection. Non-monetary contributions from private donors sometimes play an important role in the process of resource mobilization. Here also the do's and don'ts of practice when meeting with the donors need to be kept in mind. Let me outline different types of support. Resource mobilization is actually a process of raising different types of support for the organization. It can include both cash and in-kind support. This process consists of eliciting different types of support. 1. Submitting proposals to a typical donor agency is the most conventional way of getting support. Two. 
fundraising events are organized where some celebrities are invited and requests are made. 3. Donation boxes are kept in public and commercial places along with the request for small amounts of money. 4. Collecting in-kind contributions such as used clothes, furniture, books, vehicles or even buildings is another source of raising resources. 5. Support of volunteers can be enlisted in fundraising. 6. The organization can generate income from business-oriented projects of the organization such as selling of publications, offering consultancies, microfinance, microinsurance or microenterprise-based activities and so on. Let me discuss about the proposals for fundraising. There are funding agencies of various types, funding for various types of developmental needs. Many of these are funding the field of disability also. Availing funding from them requires preparation of a detailed write-up, also called project proposal, stating things in detail. A proposal must convince the prospective donor of two things such as the significance and the magnitude of the problem and measures for its solution. There are three major types of proposals such as unsolicited, a response to a specific program within a specific donor agency, a response to a request for proposals. The rules for proposal writing are that the proposal should be concise, the appeal for support should be passionate and positive and separate proposal should be written for each funder. Proposals should include chapters such as title or cover page, the name of the organization, contact details, name of the program and so on, letter of intent proposal summary or executive summary, statement of need or a problem statement, program description in terms of goals, objectives, method and so on, project plan for funding period mentioning the milestones over certain delivery period and with the estimated cost, monitoring and evaluation plan, organizational information focusing on the history, structure, board of trustees and so on and the budget. Let me sum up. Resource mobilization in the field of disability is a major area of social work intervention in the present scenario. The concept is similar to that used in other fields of social work with the difference in some of the strategies only. Resource mobilization may be defined as a management process that involves identifying people who share the same values as your organization and taking steps to manage that relationship. It is a process that involves three integrated concepts, namely organizational management and development, communicating and prospecting, and relationship building. The process of resource mobilization has its own do's and don'ts which may be helpful. The principal methods of resource mobilization are government grants, public revenue raising efforts, usage fees, contributions from private donors and foreign assistance. Situational analysis helps organizations to identify their positions before planning for an action. Development organizations plan methodologies that contribute to the viability and sustainability of the communities with which they work. There are funding agencies of various types, funding for various types of developmental needs. Many of these are funding in the field of disability also. Availing funding from them requires preparation of a detailed write-up called project proposal. A proposal must convince the prospective donor of two things such as the significance and magnitude of the problem and measures for its solution. There are three major types of proposals such as unsolicited, 
a response to a specific program within a specific donor agency and a response to a request for proposals. Let me sign off now and hope to see you in another session. Thank you.